six. So we're looking at uh, the boat from Hong Kong, China. Thank you, Mang, on the left of your screen with the visor and uh, Chow Kwong Wing in the bow seats. These guys, sixth in the lightweight men's quad. That's a non-Olympic event at last year's World Championships, but a good performance still to get through and in that final. China won Li Zhongyang and Dong Tiang Feng. And uh, Dong Tiang Feng, second in this event, behind the British in uh, Penrith in Two 2013. Minutes. Let me see the favourites for this race. Ephoristos Consolos and Spiro and Giannans. Here is us just making the sign of the cross for every race. Giannaris, of course, the world under 23 champion in 2012 in single skulls. Lane five, Perry Ward and Adam Chichak. And William and Tim Day from Victoria in lane six. And just a name check for the Chinese crew in lane three. We didn't mention Li Hui and Kong Den Ming. That was the boat that came fifth in this event last year. And we saw a very close race in the heat between China 2 and Australia 1. 0 0.06 of a second separating those crews to both progress to this final. But the faster of the two heats was indeed the Greeks. About seven seconds quicker than the China 2 crew qualified in. So certainly will be a tight race between those four crews in the middle lane. The two Greeks, we're looking there at uh, Giannaros, world champions in the lightweight men's quad. They won the non-Olympic event last year's world championships. Now to be in the Olympic event. This event is an Olympic event, the lightweight men's double skulls. Hong Kong, China. China and, uh, one. All these men China two, probably rowing in white boats. Three, the Filippi, which is the favourite boat for uh, this event. The Italian Australia boat. Two. So all of them in the white boats. But the men to keep an eye on in the centre lanes. Lane four, Greece, and lane three, China. And they're off the Greeks getting the early jump. In lane four, in the middle, they're the fastest qualifiers. We'd expect to see them really take charge of this race in the early stages. And that's what they've indeed done. They're just about a metre up on lane one over on the far side. Hong Kong, China also getting a clean, fast start. Yeah, we've got a great close-up shot there of um, the stroke man, uh, Spiridon Giannaros. Fantastic talent at 21 years of age. Really blasted that single skulls title, the under-23 single skulls title. European champions the same year in the lightweight men's double skull. I mean, this guy has got a fantastic future in the sport and he will be eyeing gold in uh, Rio 2016, no doubt about that. And we can see China won in lane two on screen. Uh, they had a pretty good uh, repercharge, uh, sorry, uh, uh, heat the other day coming second to the Greeks. They were about four seconds down on the Greeks, so certainly the faster two boats from the early qualification series into this final. And those two boats out leading now, but the Greeks, uh, boy, they're, they're strong. They're getting a nice uh, connection there at the front. They're really ripping it through a lot of power there in the second half of that stroke. Yeah, the thing to look at, look at the stern of the boat, is just how much is it dipping? So if it dips uh, quite a lot, that means they're losing speed when they put the blades in. But that's quite a, a nice flow that we saw from the Greeks there coming up to the first 500 metres. So through the first quarter, the Greeks go through in 133. 0.99. That's about uh, three seconds off world record pace. Again, we keep saying the conditions here, nothing like as quick as the time that world record was set by Denmark in the Amsterdam World Cup way back. And they're pushing out to almost a length lead now over the Chinese crew. But they're looking sharp. We expected to see them here. Nice blade work. Good synergy there between the two athletes. You can barely see the bow man there behind uh, the stroke man. They're looking very clean and they're pushing out to a clear water lead now over China two, sorry, over China one in lane two. 
Uh, Eleferios uh, Kixolas, the bowman, uh, the older one, 25 years of age, finished eighth in the Olympic double skulls with his partner, um, and, uh, Pangiotis Magdanis. And uh, I guess that was a bit of a disappointment there. Didn't make the final, but uh, Gianni Postiglioni, the Italian coach who coaches in Greece, done a fantastic job with this boat and uh, thinks these are going to be his two strongest guys for the summer. And we can see China won in lane two, currently in second place. Sorry, that's China two in lane three there on screen. But it's all going the way of the Greeks in these early stages there. On their approach up to the 1,000 metre mark, they've really made a big solid move here in the second 500, pushing out to almost a length of clear water. They were going hard in the early stages, a big, big pull through in that second half of the stroke, but they've really relaxed on it now, looking much smoother. But the race is on for the minor medals. We've got four crews locked together there, fighting for the silver and the bronze at this stage, and Hong Kong, China over in lane one just down probably out of the medal hunt at this point yeah china won in lane two they've really got a long sort of stroke arc haven't they very very impressive length that they row we've seen uh, australia won there the crew in lane five harry ward and adam kaziki and we'd expect them to be the stronger of the two australian boats out out there at the moment australia won in the hunt certainly for a medal but they're really locked together with those Chinese crews now. China 2 definitely in the fight and China 1 just ever so slightly up for second place at the moment. Here we have the Australians Perry Ward in the bow seat Adam Kaziki with the orange glasses in the stroke seat on about 36 strokes a minute and they look good. Easy, comfortable rowing. The Greeks dominated their heat when we last saw them on Friday. 34 strokes a minute. But that boat's up and running. You can see the blue lines hardly dipping at all. Back to the Australians in lane five. Yeah, Kaziki and Ward in the double this year, but they were in the lightweight men's quad. They came fifth at the World Championships in Korea last year. But now turning their attention to the Olympic boat class, the lightweight men's double. And the Greeks come through with a commanding lead. 4.52, well clear of the rest of the field, but it's, it's the fight for the minor medals now. Australia and the two Chinese boats locked together for the silver and the bronze medal. This will be quite a sprint in the last 300 metres. Greeks really picking that boat up well and then accelerating it on. So much more dynamic. I think the Chinese there, the two Chinese boats, they're rowing very long. They don't quite have the same dynamism. They've got quite a heavy gearing, which means the blades take longer to come through the water. Gives them that length, but not quite the dynamism that the Greeks have got. Little sprint there from uh, Ward and Kaziki in uh, lane five, Australia one. Just maybe getting them, nudging them ahead with 400 metres left or so ahead of the Chinese. And a look across there from the stroke man of China one, Dong Chang Feng. He knows that uh, this is a race for the line. What a fantastic contest for the silver medal. Can't, can't split them for the silver and the bronze at this point. The Aussie boat might just have the edge. Uh, they've been down in Canberra training with Kim Crow, of course, Australia's world champion single sculler. So uh, getting some coaching down there and training alongside Kimmy. But they're locked together for that silver medal. Can't call it at this stage, but there's no doubt about the gold. The Greeks have a commanding lead. They've taken it from stroke one all the way down to the last 100 metres. Yeah, definitely. Spirit on Giannis. Uh, fancy haircut in the boat. We may get a close-up uh, shot of that, but uh, just up at 35 strokes a minute. Got it in control. The field's coming back to him in that race for silver medal. Australia and China locked head to head. Too close to call on the line. I think that's all. I couldn't say call that. That was a fantastic race between the two for silver and bronze. We'll have to wait for the replay. Come up as second for China, third for Australia, but we'll have to wait on the official result. But there was no doubt about the winner. Greece, 6.34.08, their winning time. And there we see the, the pain, the suffering from uh, Dong Chang Feng and uh, Li Xiaozhong. Second place that was, just couldn't call that quite on the line. The Australian's brave effort, well, that's a very close result, isn't it? Just taking the third place there.
Kazishi from uh, Queensland and Ward from Western Australia. Both in the lightweight men's quad last year, finished fifth. Event won by the Greeks. And of course, everyone's looking to get into the Olympic boat class now, just uh, with Rio. Well, it's so close now, two and a half years away. So, um, lightweight men's double skull is the sculling event for lightweights in the Olympic Games. And uh, everyone wants to be in that boat at this year's World Championships. 2014 so they're preparing for the Rio Olympics and these two men well I put a marker down heard the Olympic champion Mads Radmussen from Denmark may be back in training maybe even Rasmus Quist too not sure about that but uh, it'll get crowded in this event that's for sure just see China too at the top of your screen taking the silver medal away from uh, Australia won. Boy, that was a close finish, though. It looked like Australia was going to get it on the surge, but the, the Chinese just held on to that ever so slight lead that they had coming into the final 100 metres. And the final result, Greece, 634.08, well clear of China won, about three seconds behind in 637.05. A very, very tight finish there for the silver and bronze medal. All three crews in second, third, and fourth were locked together with 100 metres to go. Yeah, 634. That's, um, well, the world record in this is uh, 6.